Hey there, before you go on to enjoy the latest Raspberry Pi tutorial on how to install Flask behind Apache, I want to tell you about the fourth Raspberry Pi Zero W giveaway that I'm doing. I'll be giving away at least two Raspberry Pi Zero Ws to people who comment here uh, under this YouTube video or by going to easyprogramming.net and commenting there. Uh, you don't have to tell me anything elaborate, but if you want to tell me about your project, I'd love to hear about it. So this is the fourth giveaway. I will try and get my hands on another one, and the winners will be announced in the next video, uh, which will be the last of the mini-series on how to control uh, an LED using your browser and a Raspberry Pi. Enjoy the video! Hey there! Welcome to another Raspberry Pi tutorial part of easyprogramming.net. So far we've learned how to control your LED using two different GPIO libraries, how to turn your Pi into an Apache web server and a Flask app server. So in this tutorial we're going to combine the last two tutorials and show you how to run Flask behind an Apache web server. Uh, I've already installed Apache on this, uh, so if I go to my Pi's IP address, which is uh, .170, I can see that Apache is installed. Uh, even though we haven't installed Flask on this Pi before, we're going to create another virtual environment and create Flask a little bit differently so that we can control uh, control it behind Apache. So Apache is already installed, so uh, you can install Flask anywhere, So, but just to be a little consistent with myself, so we'll just go to var www, which is where my Apache HTML files are, and I'll create, uh, create my virtual environment and Flask app here. So we'll do pi, uh, sorry, sudo um, pi app. And we'll do everything here. So uh, before we do continue, we do need to make sure that Pi app, uh, Py Python 3 VM is available. Virtual environment is installed on our Pi. So if it's not installed, you can do sudo apt install Python 3 virtual environment. I already have it installed, so it didn't really do anything. So uh, we can then install our virtual set up our virtual environment here. So we'll do Python 3 and then bam. So I showed you a little bit more about how to create your own virtual environment in the last tutorial. So do check that out if you haven't already. Um, I'm calling it VM just for easiness sake uh, and we do have it installed here. Uh, before I move any further, I want to show you something. When I go into the bin directory, there is there used to be a file called activate this uh, in a previous version of VN, uh, V environment. Uh, for some reason, they took it out. So I'm gonna grab it again here. Uh, I think I do sudo. Um, last time I ran into problems doing this, so it will get the activate this file, uh, the script because we need this in order to tell in order. For Apache to activate our virtual environment before running Flask, uh, because otherwise, since Flask is not installed globally, Apache won't be able to run our Python app here. So once we have this installed, let's get that out of the way. We need to make sh changes to our Apache configuration. So we'll just uh, DC Apache to uh, clear. Let's do list. Uh, we have a couple of directories and files here. The what I am interested in is the sites available file directory. So we'll do CD sites available and we see a default configuration and a default SSL configuration. Uh, I want to create another configuration for my Pi, uh, for my Flask app even though I don't really need to. I can just do it in the default one but it's just easier to read. So we'll do sudo nano pi app dot com and I'll copy the virtual host information over. So if you're wondering where I got this information, I uh, actually got this from uh, the documentation on the Flask uh, website. Their documentation is really good. So this is what I use to configuring Apache, but you can make changes the way you want, just like I did. So it looks a little bit different than uh, than what is on the Flask documentation. Uh, the, the the daemon process and the script alias is the most important part. Uh, as you'll see here, it's looking for a file called you know, pyapp.wsgi, which is something that we need to create uh, that Apache will access to activate our uh, virtual environment where Flask is installed, run it, and and distribute it to uh, our users. So I'll save this. Now we have pyapp.com uh, created. Insights available. Again, list. There we go. So before we continue, we need to make sure that uh, the WSGI module for Apache is enabled or and installed. So to do that, we'll do sudo apt install 
lib apache2 mod.gi.py3. Uh, the reason we're doing this is because uh, by default I found that this library is not included in, uh, in our Raspberry Pi. So I'll just do this, it'll run, it'll install something, it takes uh, a few seconds to install once this is done. Uh, the next thing we want to do is we want to enable this configuration for Apache to use. So we'll do um, sudo a2n site pyapp.com and it says enabling site pyapp. Uh, just for the hell of it, let's disable our default. Uh, you can disable it so that when Apache runs, the only thing that will run is pyapp. Uh, the SSL will also run, but we, uh, we don't have any um, HTTPS sites running here. And then we'll do sudo service apache2 restart it'll restart pi uh, restart apache excuse me let's go to pi app again here we need to create a wsgl file uh, as well as our flask application so let's continue with our flask app so let's activate our virtual environment, and then let's install Flask. So pip install Flask. Again, it takes uh, a minute or so to download everything, uh, to, to install, download and install Flask in our local virtual environment here. So I explained this in the last uh, tutorial as well that I did run into to a, a permissions issue. So I'll do deactivate, and then we'll do sudo shown our pi pi n so that I can run it as pi so the virtual environment and then we'll do pip install flask again so flask has been installed here let's clear and let's create a simple um, pi app pi app pi script so we'll do um, sudo nano app.py and I'll copy the exact same code as I did in my last tutorial. Let's do export flask app. Let's do uh, pi app.py and then let's do um, flask run post 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Uh, Let's see if it runs. If it runs, that's great. It's running. Now if I go to my Director here and look uh, and hello world it's it's loading as expected what we want to do is we want to go we want to make it so that when we go to slash pi app that it actually runs our pi app directory without the port because uh, remember that uh, to our browsers dot one seven zero and dot one seven zero colon five thousand these are two different websites so when we need to make ajax calls these are cross origins and we don't run into issues and this is why i want to run flask behind apache so that we can run uh, a little website in front of it and call our python apps without uh, any issues so let's get out of here and then let's do um we need to create our wsgi file so the sudo nano pi app wsgi and again, I'm going to copy and paste some code, and I'll talk a little bit about it. Close, save it so that, and go back in so that the colors make sense. Get rid of that. Um, so what this is saying is that remember that activate this that py script that we downloaded. So this uh, WGI file, when it's called by Apache, the activate this script will run, and it will enable our or activate our virtual environment for Apache to run because again remember without the virtual environment Flask does not exist and for Apache there is no Flask so once we activate their virtual environment Apache can run Flask uh, as if we are running it right now so save this once this is done so we'll do service Apache to restart with the sudo um, just to make sure Apache picks up this WSGI file and if everything works as expected pi app and there you go pi app is, is running so pi app uh, without the colon so now if we create a, a, 
uh, a little HTML site somewhere here and we call slash pi app uh, using Ajax, we will be able to get hello world without uh, running into any cores issues. So there you go. I hope uh, you've learned a little bit something about how to install uh, a Flask app server behind an Apache web server. So come back to the next tutorial where I will combine uh, everything that we've learned and control our LED using uh, using everything we've learned. Uh, it, it'll be cool and, uh, and uh, I do have some more uh, information for you then. Um, thanks for watching. I hope you've learned something. If you have any questions, do ask in the comments below. Uh, if you want to see new content, if you want me to cover something that I haven't, let me know. I'm always happy to help. And always visit easyprogramming.net for more uh, tutorials. And thanks for watching. Have a great one.